Hello, my YouTube world. This is Johnny Mo. I'm going to do something I've never done before. I'm going to release two videos in one day on the same subject. Deck Talk! You know, I got a lot of questions over the last couple months what I think about right standers and standers period. So this is what this is going to be about. Special edition talking about how, what I think. Now, since you've asked what I think, I'm going to tell you what I think about standers. <clears throat> so, I do not want people to get offended. This is my opinion only. If you have a bunch of standers and you like standers and they work for you, God bless you. Have a field day with them. For us, we don't like them. There are a couple reasons why I don't like them. I'm going to share them with you. First, I'm going to go with the king of all standers. And the reason why I say it's the king is because it was the first one out. It basically invented the standard. It's right. The right standers. We have a lot of experience with right, and I'll tell you why we do. We used to have a very big dealer here that carried them. They wanted us to run right so bad, they came to a neighborhood I had with their big enclosed trailer and unleashed a whole bunch of rights for us to cut the whole neighbor. At that time, I was cutting about six lawns, so I used all of the rights. I, I've used them. I know what's good about them, what's bad about them. Now, as far as... Okay. As far as quality of ride... Out of all the standards we've run, this is the standard that's the best going to be seated on a hill. It's going to be, uh, the, 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 the spring platform is very comfortable. It's a good mower. It's a nice, a light footprint. Not too bad. The deck, again, when you're dealing with the deck, Wright has not stepped up to the plate. They've tried, they're trying, every year they're releasing a new deck or new deck thing. And people who have them, they want to make excuses for them. But here's my deal. I cut a lot of half million dollar homes. And they're fertilized, they're juicy, they're up there in the spring. Now, if your mower is a good cutting mower, that's when you know it's going to be a good cutting mower. Not in the middle of the summer, or not behind a cow paddy field behind your shop, where you've cut the grass every two days, and you're cutting this much off, and that's your test batch. The test batch should be cutting four to six inches of grass off and see how it lays it out on the carpet. It should be a test batch between eight and ten o'clock in the morning. It should be a test batch of different heights and different moisture levels to be a real life test batch. They don't do that. They just take it outside, run it across the field. Oh, that looks good. Put it in production. If something comes up, they'll let us know and we'll fix it. To me, Wright has a great product. If they could put a Skag deck or a Toro deck or an Xmark deck under their product, they'd have the best product out in the market. But they can't. Their decks, in my opinion, stink. When you're cutting at 8 o'clock in the morning or, or cutting high grass, it doesn't leave a quality cut. It struggles. It always has, and I believe it always will. Okay. Uh, some other things that outside, I think, I believe that standards are just too slow. You have to understand where I'm coming from now. I'm coming from big boy zero turns, 30 horsepower and above. I've got a zero turn sitting out there that's got a 36 Vanguard. The one before it had a 32 Vanguard. I have a 52 that has a 30 uh, Briggs and Stratton on it. I mean, listen, you're powering through stuff. These standards are going like 8 mile an hour, 7 mile an hour. That's too slow. You know, I'm going, I clocked, I GPSed my Ferris Zero Turn with a 61-inch deck, and it had a 27 Kohler on it. That was before the 30s really started to get big. Um, I clocked it at 14 mile an hour. And you're thinking about a Ferris that can cruise across the yard and take bumps. Awesome machine. Um, just my opinion, they're just too slow. Well, you've never run a stand. I have run, I've run every standard, literally, the, every standard except for a Gravely Pro Stance is the only one I haven't had my hands on. Now, Bobcat just put a, a standard out too recently too. I haven't ran, run that one either. I haven't run any Bobcats. Very interested in their deck design. I have a feeling it's a lot like the X-Mark with their closed-in baffles. I think that could be an issue between 8 and 10 o'clock. I'm very sharp when I look at these decks. I could pick up a deck and tell you right away if it's going to be a good cutting machine or not. Um, so... <clears throat> Back to the standards, some other things I didn't like. They do have a rapid deck height um, one, which isn't bad. 
eh, you know, but the rest of them are, you know, pull the top pins out, take out a couple bolt. No, I'm not. That's it. Once I have to do that, you're done. I'm not playing with you. You're done. If I have to pull pins out and lift the mower, front mower out, it's over. Wright had a big, you know, they're big on that. You know, unless you upgrade to the biggest one and they have that rapid deck height, which is good. They have a ZK killer. It's fast. I did like that. I liked how fast it was. Again, cut quality, stunk. It does not compare to the, the Ferris, the X Mark. The Toro, the Skag, you can just forget about it. It's not in the same class. It's in a class right below it. Um, I'm sure you can work with it, maybe from 11 o'clock to about 5 o'clock. I'm sure it cuts pretty decent. I'm sure, you know, as long as the grass isn't real high, you know. <clears throat> Listen, I don't like to double cut lawns. You know, I, I, I don't like to. If I have to double and triple cut lawns, I'm bagging it. You know, if you're going to sit and double cut lawns all the time, then... I don't want nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? If you, if I have to double cut a few lines here and there, that's fine. But if I got to go back and double cut the whole thing, I'll just put the bagger on. I'm not going to sit around and play around with a lawn. You know, I when I cut those lawns with this with the right stander, they had to be double cut and some triple cut. That's a no no for me. You get paid for one cut. I'm not going to sit here and play around. You know, that's why I like the big wide open decks getting it out onto the lawn, laying it out really nice, a nice fan, cut quality looks smooth, you're striping it up, you can go and get out of there. Another thing I don't like about standers, and this goes with all standers, not just with right, I don't like, they don't have high capacity baggers. They have these little three cubic foot baggers. You can go one pass and go dump, one pass and dump. I don't like that. And I do not want to have to cut a whole lawn and then run over it with the bagger. I don't like that either. We're cutting grass. Let's the the easiest thing to do when you're buying a mower is to find a mower that can straight up cut grass. It has a great first cut quality of cut. If you have to go over a few cuts, that's fine. You want something that it's going to increase your productivity. I don't want to have to carry a three quarter inch wrench to unbolt the back tire, to lift the deck up a little bit, then put it on the D setting, then go to the front. Forget that. Well, you could get really good. You could carry it. And you could no. That's time. You got guys working for you. You don't have time. I've got a lot of lawns at different neighborhoods. Some cut at three. Some cut at three and a half. Some cut at four inches. I don't have time to play around with it. Well, I cut all my lawn at three inches, and that's it. I'm glad that's what you do. Then that's the mower for you. It's not the mower for me. So that's been my experience. Experience with the right. I have tried the Skag V ride. I'm sure. It's a good mower. I don't like it. And the only reason why I don't like it is just too slow. I'm like, Johnny, too slow. Again, in my trailer right now, I have a 36 horsepower Vanguard 61 inch snapper. That sucker's going to go 12 mile an hour. I don't care. I've, I've clocked them. The fastest you're going to go outside of the ZK Killer is 8. And they're slow. And, and they're just, just slow. When, when Toro. When Toro released the grandstand, they, they brought it down for us to write a field report for, and that was one of the very first things I noticed, how slow it was. We also, at the same time, we cut eight lawns that day, eight or nine lawns that day. We had a G6. They were just getting released, a G6, a total redesign uh, of their mower. They are going to put the gas tank in the middle. They were going to start running the hydro gear pumps with the, the integrated pumps, and it was just a new design. They brought it down. We wrote a field the comparison between the two was not even close. The G6 blew it right out. I mean, we actually raced them on the street. And I was down at the other end of the street, and you're just chugging along with the grandstand. The grandstand cut very well. It, you, it came up a little bit in the front. Such bigger guys like myself, 250 and above, you had a little bit of trouble with, you know, if you went up a little slight ingrade, the front wanted to get up, but they made a weight kit for it. I like the mower. I just think they're too slow. It's just my opinion. That's why we don't own standards. Um, you know, if I had to have a, if I had to have something, I would probably end up buying a walk behind and putting a Valky on it, like a like a Jungle Wheels or something. If I had to do something like that, I just can't see spending eight to ten thousand dollars on on these standards when you could sit and go much faster. I mean, much faster. It's not even close. You know. 
No one can tell me anything different. I've raced them down the streets. You you can't even compare the how fast you know these zero turns are. Just my opinion. I don't like the right cutting decks, so I will never own a right. Um, I do like the Skaggs cutting deck. I like the Toro and the X Mark. Never did the Pro Stance, so can't tell you about the Gravely. I've heard really good things about it. You know, guys, you know, ch chime in here. You know. Um, the ZK Killer was fast, but the quality of cut just sucked. I got a, I got a guy who's in competition with me, and he cuts with a ZK Killer, and it's weak, man. My my Snapper Pro Pro blows them out of the water. When I leave the lawn, I'm crushing them, you know. And unfortunately, I hate to say that because I think there's a there's a market for those things. It's just, eh, you know, obviously there's a market for them because. You know, guys are buying them <clears throat> left and right. Uh, but it, out of all the standards, right is the most comfortable. It, the the, the stand-on plate is in the right place. And because they have a patent for it, everyone else has to kind of work around it. Go behind the wheels or all the way in there. Or just different things. Um, the John Deere stander, uh, I've actually cut lawns with it. I didn't like it at all. It was comfortable. It actually, you know... The, the standard was in the right place. The deck sucked. It just threw, it blew crump, clumps all over the place. And the guy actually came out. This is no lie. The guy came out and goes, can you please not use that mower anymore? I had to actually take my Toro off the trailer and recut the lawn just to make it look good. Um, but I'm cutting northern grasses. That's my stance on standards. You know, if you guys want them, that's cool. But where I'm at, I want the big 30 horsepower and above mowers. And I want to go. You know, I, I don't want, I just don't want those slow things. Um, when I first started the business, I had Toros with with uh, Jungle Wheels on them, about 20 horsepower, V-twin Kohlers, and, you know, we used those for years. They had this, those SFS decks, those Super Flow System deck, they sucked. Can't cut in wet grass, couldn't cut high, they sucked. I don't even know how we even made money back then. We just had to double cut and... You know, but it's about speed for me. It's about quality of cut and speed. Here's another thing I don't like, and 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 um, the ICD deck is guilty of this too. This is my opinion, and I don't care if they hear me or not. If you go get a mower and it's got a plastic, so-called, um, if it's got a plastic, uh, what's those things called, stripe kit, or a rubber stripe kit, just something off the back to help lay down the grass, it's not on there. Because that's what it's what they say it's on there. It's on there to cover up a design flaw. It's on there because the way the grass passes through the deck chambers, it causes a different type of um, wind pattern that messes up a grass pattern that they don't want you to see. It's absolutely the truth. I'm totally convinced of it. The ICD deck has one on it. I rip them right off. And and it's trying what the ICD deck is trying to do is cover up because when you get a lot of grass going through there, the airflow gets restricted. And what happens, it cuts a little line between the discharge blade and the center blade. There's a little mark it'll leave right in the grass. It looks like a little piece of stick is sticking down and it's drugged through the grass. Well, when you have that, when you have that strike kip on it, that little rubber piece hanging off the back, it, it pushes the grass down and it kind of covers this up. I don't like stuff like that. Uh, I'll tell you why I don't like stripe kits and we'll cut this out. We'll just upload it. Straight kips, if you're cutting anything grass that grows, uh, doesn't grow straight up and down, what will happen is, is the deck passes over the back part of the blade, it'll bring it up and it'll cause stringers. That is the most frustrating thing when you get done cutting grass, is seeing a whole bunch of stringers. Coarse Vescue is a grass that'll do this. Um, crab grass is a grass that'll grow sideways, where that little, that little, that little black rubber or rubber piece stripe kit will bring it right up in the air. I can't stand that stuff. So I strip those off right away. You know, I don't like that. That means there's a design flaw somewhere. You haven't figured it out and they're just buying time and you're their R&D. I can tell you that I've worked extensively with the with uh, Ferris and Snapper Pro with these ICD decks. I have called every year about little fixes that I've made. I've got it to the point now where I've got this thing almost perfect. I had to go to a lower lift blade to do it. That's my time, guys, and that's Deck Talk 2.